بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وجن علما اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وتغضى وجنب الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن فالحمد لله last week we started the tafsir of سورة الرحمن سورة الرحمن is the most beautiful Quran سورة in the Holy Quran the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned in the hadith that everything has a bride. Bride, not in the literal sense, the ulama they explain that something that is beautiful, appealing, and the most beautiful thing in the Quran is Surah Al Rahman. <coughs> so in this surah, Allah mentions Fabi Rabbikuma to Kaziban 31 times. The first um, uh, eight times it's regarding the blessings of Allah like I mentioned last week there are five themes five topics which Allah discusses in Surah Rahman number one Quran Ar-Rahman Allam Al-Quran number one so we discussed about Quran last week then the second one is about the blessings of Allah then the third one is about Jahannam then Jannah and then another Jannah a greater Jannah or a lower Jannah whichever meaning you take so the first eight فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ is regarding the blessings of Allah that is what we will be discussing today the next seven is regarding Jahannam then the eight after that is regarding one type of Jannah and then the second eight is regarding another type of Jannah so out of the thirty-one 16 are just about Jannah Imagine How Allah opens up Jannah How Allah describes Jannah How Allah You know mentions the you know, The beauties of Jannah The bounties of Jannah It's amazing But Jahannam Allah very briefly mentions Only 7 In fact in the whole surah There's only like 3 or 4 ayah Which is regarding Jahannam <coughs> So Now who is Rabbi Kuma referring to last week we were discussing this فَبِ أَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّمَانِ means which of the blessings of your Lord with two of you both of you deny so who is that both of you referring to like I mentioned some ulama they mentioned that people say it is uh, the men the, the male the female it is you know but the most common one, the most authentic one is that it refers to the human kind and to the jinn kind. When we speak about jinn, then Allah mentions now after the first Fabi Ayyada Yarabikuma to Kaziman, Allah mentions what Allah created human with and what Allah created the jinn with. So this also indicates you know the rabt, the correlation between the verses of the Quran. You know how the verses of the Quran link with one another. Why did Allah use this after this verse? So the, the first time Allah mentioned Fabi Ayala Yabikuma to Kadiban, after that Allah mentions what He has created the human with and what He has created the jinn with, which also indicates that that pronoun which Allah says both of you is actually the human and the jinn. That also indicates. When we start talking about jinn, then some people they start getting goosebumps. They, they start shivering. He said, I'm not gonna sleep tonight. Nothing. You know, there was a time before in history where the jinn used to be scared of humans. It's a fact. They used to be scared of humans. But when the humans started getting scared of them, that's when they started scaring us more. So there's no need to be scared. They are creation of Allah. They can't do anything without the permission of Allah. There's nothing to be scared about. The more you feel scared, the more they will scare. The more they will, you know, play around. The more they will tease us. You just tell them straight. Allah is the greatest. For the sake of Allah, stop playing around with me. Go away from here. And they will never touch you, inshallah, for the rest of your life. But the more you feel, no, no. Jinn is going to come to me. Jinn is going to come to me. Jinn is going to touch me. Jinn... Then the more they're going to tease you. The more they're going to play around with you, the more they're going to start giving you a hard time. So anyway, 
Allah has mentioned a whole surah after them. So the Prophet ﷺ recited this surah on Laylatul Jinn, on the night of Jinn. Yeah, there's a masjid in Mecca, Mukarramah, you go to Mecca, there's a masjid there, Masjidul Jinn. So it is narrated, Allah knows best, that uh, the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he, that is where all the jinns were gathered, and the Prophet ﷺ went there and he read Quran to them. Because the Prophet of Allah, he was a prophet for everyone. He was a prophet for the human, he was a prophet for the jinn, he was a prophet for the, even the animals. Ali radiallahu anhu says, we are walking, and then the stones, the rocks, they are doing salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. We continue walking. The shajar, the trees are saying assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. We continue walking. We hear the voices of salam. We look around. We can't see anyone. It was the jinn that were greeting Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a prophet to everyone. Even to animals. He was a prophet. Kafatan. To everyone. Okay? So, the Prophet وسلم, he gathered all the jinn together in that place, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was with him. So, he made Abdullah ibn Mas'ud sit on one place. He said, You sit here, and then he drew a line around him. And he said, Don't go out of this line. Just stay within this line, in this boundary. You will see all sorts of things out of this place. You will see all sorts of things out of this line. Yeah? If you go beyond this line, then we will meet on the day of Qiyamah. We will not meet again in this world. So just stay in this line, boundary. Okay? So, the Prophet وسلم, he recited Surah to Rahman to the Jinn. And when the Prophet وسلم, recited Surah Rahman to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were just quiet. They never said anything. They were just quietly listening. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he finished, he said, Imagine, can you imagine the scenery, how it must have been, the Sahaba sitting, the Prophet of Allah reciting Quran, when is me reading the Quran, when is you reading the Quran, when is the Prophet of Allah himself reading the Quran, on whom the Quran was revealed. Imagine. So he's reading the Quran and Imagine reading Surah to Rahman to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So they were totally quiet. Imagine what a recitation that must have been. Then he told them, like I mentioned last week, he said, Your fellow jinn, you know, your fellow creation, meaning your, the jinn, they were better in responding to my recitation than you. So they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what do you mean? She said, whenever I recited All of you were quiet, but the jinn were not quiet. They responded, they said, We don't, you know, reject. We don't, because what does for Rabbikuma mean? It means, so which of the blessings, Allah means blessings, bounty of your Lord will both of you deny. So they responded, that La, you know, with your praise, we don't deny any blessing of yours, O oh Allah. You know, um, you are, you know, Quran is the navigation. You know, as we, inshallah, we move on to Surah Al-Waqiyah soon, then we will realize that Allah refers to the, makes a comparable of the Quran with the stars. فَلَا أُخْسِبُ بِمَوَاقِعِ النُّجُومِ Stars. And I mentioned this uh, in some of the programs, I said, why is Allah comparing it with the stars? One of the reasons is that before, back in the days, people used to use the stars as, you know, the guidance, the navigation, tom tom. So if they had to, and that was, some people, they knew the knowledge of it. So if they had to go to a certain place, you know, they would look at the stars. Okay, now we need to, you know, turn right. Now we need to turn left. Now we need to go this way. You know, that was the knowledge which is forgotten now, you know, it's lost. Now people, they don't know this knowledge anymore. But back in the days, people used to know this knowledge. And every person, if he had to go on a long journey, either he used to know himself or he used to take somebody who knew that knowledge of looking at the stars for directions. That used to be the map. So Allah is, and there's other reasons as well. So Allah is comparing the Quran with the star. That that star will only show you A to B. This Quran will show you your way to Jannah. 
I know when the tom tom you are, fo- you are trying to follow a tom tom, and the tom tom says take a right, <coughs> take a left. You know, I'm. Um, uh, so if you if the tom tom is telling you take a right and you end up taking a left, you ignore it. You will reach your destination. You never reach your destination. You will you will end up somewhere else. You need to follow the tom tom in order to reach where you want to reach. So you need to follow the Quran in order to reach Jannah. The Quran is saying perform salah. Then we need to perform salah. The Quran says give zakat. Then we need to give zakat. The Quran says don't lie. Then we do. the Quran says don't backbite. Then we, we need to follow these navigations. I know sometimes when you take a wrong turning, when you end up in the wrong direction, then the tom tom, the navigation will continue telling you turn round when possible, turn round when possible, turn round when possible. Take a U turn. Take a U turn. That is for the ayah day of Bikma to Kadima. Allah is, you know, people are enjoying the blessings of Allah. <coughs> Allah is showering the blessings on them. The earth we are walking on belongs to Allah. The air we breathe belongs to Allah. You know, the water we take, we drink belongs to Allah. The blessings we eat belongs to Allah. And then we don't have time for Allah, we don't have time to obey Allah, we don't have time to turn to Allah. Sallallahu is saying, فَبِأَيَّ عَلَىٰ يَغَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِبَانَ Turn round when possible, come back to Allah. Which of the blessings of your Lord will you deny? That's Allah telling us, take a U-turn. Take a U-turn, come back to Allah. Understand who's giving you all these blessings. Who created you, understand who's sustaining us. So inshallah, moving on. <coughs> Allah says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كَالْفَخَّارِ Allah has created insan, human, from salsal. Salsal means sounding clay. A clay which makes, which is used for pottery. You know, when you make uh, clay bowls, pots, etc. Kalfakhar, which are used for pottery. In some places, Allah says that Allah used. Um, uh, Min tini lazib, sticky clay. In some other place, Allah uses dark clay. Some other places, Allah uses. What does that mean? Did Allah use the sounding clay? Did Allah use the sticky clay? Did Allah use the dark one? Which one did Allah use? So, ulama dimension, Allah used a bit of everything. Adam alayhi salam was created with a mixture, sounding clay. Sticky clay, or it could mean different stages. So in the beginning it is dry, then as you put it together, it starts getting a bit sticky. It starts, you know, then as it becomes firm, they start making noise. You know, when you, you know, like a sounding clay means when the clay becomes strong and hard, then when you tap it, they make a noise. So the sound, sound is coming out of it, the sounding clay. So when the form was made. They start making noise, then Allah blew the, the soul into it. And it's amazing, you know, this is among the beauty that Allah, crea- wherever Allah mentions the creation of Adam alayhi salam, where Allah created Adam alayhi salam, He mentions that Allah created, Allah says, I made him with my own hands, biyadayya, with my two hands. Now, does Allah have hands? Does Allah have fingers? Does Allah have a face? All these things. Matashabihat. You know, we cannot imagine any being for Allah. We cannot imagine any hands for Allah. Allah has yad. You know, yad is the word which is mentioned in the Quran, so we will stick to that word. Ulama say you shouldn't even translate it to another language. Otherwise, then you'll end up being a form. You're creating a form to yourself. And you know, I'm just explaining these things. So Allah created Adam with his own hands. Allah knows beyond what that means, you know, how it was, whatever. Another thing Allah created, Allah did with his own hands, كَتَبَتْ تَوْغَاتَ بِيَدِي He wrote the Tawrat with his own hands. Tawrat, Allah wrote it with his own hands. That's another thing as well, amazing. So that was how the in, ins were created. You know, clay, something which is like on the surface of the earth, the lowest of the low. Right at the bottom, clay. Right at the bottom. The sticky clay is quite deep in. 
you know, you get the dry at the top and when you dig in, that's where you'll find you know, the sticky one a bit more down. So the lowest of the low is where the human came from. And then Allah mentioned about the jinn. وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِن مَارِجٍ مِن نَاغ And Allah created the jinn from a smokeless flame of fire. Smokeless. So you have a fire which blazes from the bottom. So you put a fire here, it starts blazing and it looks like a flame. But then as it goes higher, at the top there's no flame, it's smoke. It just smoke at the top. So the highest place is the smoke. So the highest of the highest of the fire is what jinns were created from. And the lowest of the low is where the humans were created from. So the totally opposite. Jinns are created from the smoke up there. And the humans are created from the clay down there. So Allah is saying, understand your um, uh, reality, understand your origin, where you came from. O oh, insan, you will be buried in that lowest of the low. You'll be going back into there. And O oh, jinn, because jinn, the you know, fire normally, that's where Iblis were created from as well. So fire normally goes up. And fire due to that, it has a lot of arrogance in them. That's why Iblis, when he was told to do sajda to Adam alayhi salam, he was very arrogant. The Quran says, not my words. Abba was takbar. He refused and he was arrogant. So me doing sajda to this? I was created from the highest of the high. And he was created from the lowest of the low. And you want me to do sajda to him? But he never realized that it's not about sajda to this or that. It's about obedience to the command of Allah. Ramadan is coming very soon. Now to eat during Ramadan, in Ramadan, now that is wrong, that is a sin. And then the day of Eid comes, then not to eat is a sin. Now you'll be thinking, what's this? Is eating Ibadah, is not eating Ibadah? Allah is saying, eating is not even Ibadah, not eating. The main thing is obedience to my command. When I tell you to eat, then you eat. When I tell you to not eat, then you don't eat. That is what you meant to do. Obedience. When I told everybody to do sajda, you meant, you're not meant to see who am I doing sajda to, what were they created from, who the command is coming from. Allah is. The command is from up there. The command is from Allah. Imagine shaitan, he refused to do one sajda. One sajda. Due to which he was exiled from the court of Allah. Now he's cursed till the day of Qiyamah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Everybody who reads A'udhu, they always say Rajeem, Rajeem, accursed. Imagine what will be the situation of, you know, many of us Muslims today. We fail to do so many sajda. When Fajr we miss, just something to think about, when we miss one Fajr, for us we may be just one Fajr Salah, but we have actually missed eight sajda in front of Allah. Eight. Allah. The closest point a person can ever get is sajda. Sajda. Amazing. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ بِغَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ If you want to get close to Allah, if you want to feel that connection with Allah, then fall into sajda. Go into sajda and see how that feeling happens. Pour your heart out. Many times, you know, many people, uh, you know, they do, they want to talk to someone. They're going through some tough times in their life. They've got some issues. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to turn to. Sometimes they want to tell the parents. The parents have their own issues to, you know, deal with. Sometimes they want to tell their friends. They don't have time for them. Sometimes they get frustrated. I want to talk to someone. I want to take it out. People in the world, they don't have time for you. You, know, you book an appointment with the psychiatrist, then you have to pay. You have to pay, otherwise if the NHS will not pay for you, then you have to pay. That's the world today. You know, a person, the lawyer or the barrister, 
for every question they are they, they, they charge. So when they, you know, one doctor he was sitting with a lawyer or somebody solicitor. So everybody would come to a doctor and asking him, oh, you know, I've got a headache. What should I take? Nobody was asking him a question. The lawyer. She said, you seem to have a, you know, nobody seemed to be asking you anything. She said, yeah, they know, I charge. She said, they know that I'm not going to answer the questions for free. They are definitely going to get the um, uh, bill on the way. She said, you charge? She said, how much do you charge? She said, three questions, a hundred dollars, hundred pounds for three questions. She said, that's a lot of money. She said, yes. So that's two questions then. How much do you charge? One question. That's a lot of money? Yes, two questions. She said, okay, before I send you the bill, you can ask a third question. You've already asked me two questions. Now, let me give you a bill so you can go with the third question. So, <coughs> that is the human and the jinn. Then Allah says, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Then Allah says, رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ وَرَبُّ الْمَغْرِبَيْنِ The Lord of the two east, and the Lord of the two Wests. Now, if you read the Quran, then in some places Allah says, Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghrib, the Lord of the East, one East, just East, the Lord of the West. Now, that's understandable. There's only one East, there's only one West. That's okay. Some places Allah says, Rabbul Mashariqi wal Maghrib, the Lord of many East and many Wests. Now, how many East are there? How many West are there? So is Allah referring to the East and the West which we have, <coughs> what we know of East and West? It could mean that as well, that uh, the East or Mashriqain could mean the East and the North or the East and the South. Or some people they say that the way they the East and the West on this Earth, they are East and the West in the heavens as well. So Allah is the Lord of the East on the Earth and the Lord of the East on the Heavens. Allah is the Lord of the West on the Earth and Allah is the Lord of the West on the Heavens. That could be one of the meanings. Another meaning is that a person's beginning of his life is his East. That's where he has come out from. And the end of his life is his West. You know how the sun comes out from the East and it sets in the West. A person's birth is his east, a person's death is his west. So Allah is not just referring to the world and the east and the west of the world. Allah is referring to every individual's east and the west. Every individual's birth till death. Rabbul Mashriqain and Maghribain could mean the east and the west of the humans, meaning the birth and the death of the human till the death of the humans. And the birth and the death till of the jinns. Both. Mashriqain wa maghribain. You know, many, you know, what do they say when a person dies? It's a suraj group. This person's life has finished. Meaning, Uddu, the way they say it, that this person's sun has set now. Meaning, he has reached his west. That was his end. That was his end. <coughs> so that is. Rabbul, so Allah is the Lord who has given us the birth, who has given us life from the beginning. And Allah is the one who will put that end to our life. In between, Allah has given us a bit of a choice. In our east, in our birth, we had no choice. We had no choice. We had no say. We had, you know, we just had to do how Allah did it. When we wanted, you know, how Allah wanted us to be born, where, what time. One day, nothing from our side. When the time for our west will come, when the time for our death will come, same. We have no say in that as well. When will it happen? Where will it happen? How will it happen? What time? What day? Allah knows. In between, Allah has given us a bit of a choice. And Allah has given this choice to the human and the jinn. You can do what you want to do. Or you can do what I want you to do. We have a bit of a choice. So Allah is saying that, are you going to do what you want to do? Or are you going to do what I want you to do? 
the jinn and the ins. Both of you. That is why Allah says that if in the in Jannah, Allah says, Lakum fiha ma tashtahihil anfus. You do my wants in the world, I will do all your wants in Jannah. This life is very short. 60 years, 70 years. Recently we've seen so many people who didn't even make it to 50 and they've left this world. Plenty of people. You know, in the last few weeks, in the last few months, the very short life, this 40, 50 years life. And subhanAllah, you know, if we just end up doing the wants of Allah, what Allah wants, then the ever and ever which is coming, which Allah is using 16 to describe that Allah is using Allah said I will do all your ones there and I am just giving you a rough idea by mentioning 16 so there's so many things we can say you know it's just amazing Quran as we read the Quran and as we try to understand the Quran and Subhanallah, you know, Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Will the people not contemplate on the Qur'an? Will people not ponder over the Qur'an? Or Allah says, أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Or do they have locks in the heart? Are the hearts locked? That they are not contemplating on the Qur'an. So, you know, every time we should uh, read the Qur'an, then we should make a habit of understanding the Quran as well. You know, there's so many things, inshallah, we can say more. But inshallah, we'll leave it till there. We'll continue next week. We'll continue with the blessings of Allah and how. And then we'll move on with the surah. May Almighty Allah, first of all, give me the understanding. Give all of us the understanding. Amin wa sallallahu wa sallam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.